Can you can you quickly explain? Uh, I mean, obviously without breaking any rules, but can you explain Trelleborg's architecture? So, sure. what it, what is your architectural approach to acquiring digital data, aggregating it, putting it in one place, and converting it into information? What is that yep. architectural approach? So, so the physical architecture still very much follows the Purdue model. Yep. And again, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel yet. I'm trying to meet everybody where they are. And I understand there probably are better ways to do things. However, the technology status that I have, the, the tools that I have is all built around kind of that Purdue model approach. So I just run with what I got, right? You know, why try to redo things at that state? So Single we very much- DMZ, so just one DMZ, or do you yeah. have, okay. Yeah. So you well, don't have- one... Yeah, no, no, we've, we've got one, well, we call it a, we, we call it a production control zone because every time I say DMZ, my CISO thinks I've got an internet connection that I need to disconnect. So we call it production control zone, uh, but it's at every site. So every site has a delineation. We run firewalls separately at each location that has this. And then we drop everything that's a machine into a certain VLAN structure that's behind the firewall. And we have our kept server landed in that production control zone. That's our intermediate layer in between. And that's yeah. where we focus our, our security around as well, is that, you know, each one of those layers is a different security requirement that you have to reach in order to be able to move up to the next layer. Um, you know, I, I have no way of patching a PLC easily. So everything that's in my production network is as isolated as I can make it. As, and, you know, I don't let it communicate with anything other than my kept server or other than my IoT gateway uh, that potentially could be there. So those are the things that, that I have. Uh, on that point, part of the reason Purdue exists. If Purdue exists for really two reasons. Number one, it was designed, the Purdue security model was designed at a time when master slave poll response server client was the standard architecture, right? It's what was serial communications is what was available, right? Yep. Um, so that's where Purdue, Purdue came from, right? Number one. Number two, and, and this is, and, and while while technology has changed to the point where we can uh, we could we can engineer out the need for Purdue, the one of the limitations is still there, and that is patching hardware. There's a there's a company here in, here in Dallas. It's actually a startup here in Dallas, and they're called Byte Trail. And Byte Trail, one when they re originally reached out to me, they were like, "Hey, we're thinking about doing hardware ops." So. You know, we're, we specialize in security for hardware. This is our experience. And one of the things that we see in manufacturing that's missing is the ability to manage hardware at the board level from a central location. So how do you patch stuff that you never patch, right? And yep. this company, Bike Trail, they hope, their focus is to be able to keep our PLCs, our edge devices, our HMIs, all that stuff on the latest firmware versions in real time without any downtime. Like that's their primary focus and they're developing this technology to do it. Now, where, 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 when will they have MVP? I don't know, but I do know they're gonna get there. I've seen the prototypes. I know that the technology definitely works. We're using them with one of our clients right now. But one of the things that I, I, I will be talking more and more about going forward is hardware ops. Like mm -hmm. how does, Hardware ops is a, a component that we have to be thinking thinking about. How do we manage, how do we patch hardware that sits on in, in, in the critical infrastructure? You know, I, I think a lot of people think critical is the carpeted side of the business. Well, no, I mean, that's important, but that's not critical. Critical is the stuff that makes your widgets, right? And yeah, it's like, how do, you, how do you patch critical infrastructure? And it's a, and it's a huge gap in our industry, no, no question, which is the reason that architecture has to be the way it is. So you you're using Kepware to talk to mo is to all the devices that you can. I, you actually, I think you said there's no device that you've found so far that Kepware can't talk to, right? I think you're the one who actually yep. said that. Yep. What are you using? Yep. What, what what OPC clients? So obviously, are, are you using ThingWorks? Are you using Ignition? Are you using like what what platform are you using to communicate or to, to the to Kep server and consume from the OPC server? Or well, how are you is, handling? This this is where we start merging into the Walker Reynolds landscape where we built our own. Um, so we're, we're using the, the IOT gateway on kept server. We're just throwing everything out to the cloud um, because we're a large enough corporation that we've got negotiated services uh, with the large vendors that for us consuming cloud resources is not that bad a lot. yet. Right. 
um, we still are very much in the early stages of things. Now, from an architecture standpoint, we're also doing our data ops in the cloud, which I, I can see that coming back down to an edge application at some point, right? We've not reached that kind of that, that peak of, of data throughput that we actually would need to bring some of it back yet, but it's there. You know, we know where that wall is. We know we'll eventually hit it. Um, so I know there's other tools that you've talked about. I, I won't mention the names, but I know who they are. I knew them right. when they were three people uh, as that organization and I know the one you like. Um, yep. So um, that that is very much on our radar. Uh, we very much have already trialed that stuff out. We just haven't reached kind of that critical mass to need it per se and, and justify those expenditures. But for us, we'll grab the data, we throw it out to the cloud, we do all our data ops transformations, everything out in the cloud in Azure functions um, and, and you know other functions that we have out there. And then we transmit that data into either a data lake or some sort of table storage. And then we consume it into other applications as we need to, you know, other so, you know graphical displays yeah. or other things, Power BI, um, or, or our yeah, or our own internal software that we've built. So we've we've built our own OEE software that we're kind of it, we're we're transforming it into a Mez light, right? You know, we're never going to be a full Mez organization, but it's one of the tools in our toolbox that we definitely need to hit. Um, it's OEE and, and kind of a few of the the um, the ancillary descriptions of things around OEE that you need. Um, like quality and scrap and all that fun stuff that you get into. What do you, what do you mean when you say MES, uh, you're talking about MES, what do you mean by MES. you'll never be a full MES organization? We, like what, we, what is that? Be, I'm just curious. Sure. So we are, again, you guys have kind of hit it. We're a global organization. We're also a Scandinavian organization, which means we're very decentralized. Um, I don't have one boss I have to report to. I got 120 that I got to chase when I'm, I need to get a topic off the ground. So there are different aspects and maturity of where they are on their production scales. So we don't necessarily want to go all the way down into the SCADA control layer of an org of their organization, right? You know, that's not where we are. Um, we will advise on the SCADA software that they probably should use. We will advise on, on some of the things that will work well with the next layer up from a data ops standpoint, but we're never going to sit there and tell them you guys need to use this PLC and this controller type and this, for that machine, that's never going to be where we are, and those are the pieces. Of, you know, when you think of your MES layer stack, that's kind of the piece that we're dropping out, and that's where we're relying on our machine manufacturers and 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 everybody else who's more of an expert on that than us, anyways. You know, I don't necessarily want to get into control mechanisms. I just need to know what the data is. I need to be able to get the data and go. Interestingly, okay. So, so what you're saying? Oh, sorry. So uh, let me say this. So I, I want because I want to clarify for the audience. So the way I'm visualizing this, if you guys want to understand how this is architected is there imagine we took layer three which is the manufacturing execution layer and we broke it into two blocks so now mm -hmm. you've got l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 l5 being cloud right imagine you broke layer three into two blocks one is the block that ot is responsible for and that goes down to the plant floor and then one is a block that tom's group is responsible for and that's where kepware lives and what he's doing is he's aggregating all the edge data in this other L3 block using Kep server. Then he's using the IoT gateway to stream all that data directly into the crowd, bypassing L4 going directly into L5 for IT functions using Power BI and Power Apps to turn data into information. And then he's leaving an open space in the L in the L3 layer that where manufacturing execution would traditionally live for other people to worry about. That's what that's what he's doing here. Yep. To, to agree. There, there are a lot of clients that are like this. Approach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over time, though, we are moving more and more into that other block. Like, you know, there probably will be an eventually a maintenance module that we'll have, and that'll be part of that block. And we may eventually take on some of the quality module, and that'll be part of that block. And, then, and in that other block, there's also... I mean, it's really kind of this, this soup of other stuff that's been thrown in there over the years, right? You know, we've got some ERP functions that are in there. You've got layer four stuff that's in there that people have gotten away with. So for us, we still need to take that back apart and put it into the right layers of things, right? You know, there's there's some things oh, that need to happen. 